Happy Friday, navigation traders. Today is November 22nd. Welcome to this week's video update where we review all trades, all positions, and first talk about who got caught being hot in the community. This week goes to Kathy. I, I hope I'm saying this right, Kathy. Kathy Narvaez. Uh, Kathy is a uh, just over a month into the community, I believe. And, uh, but man, she came in hot answering questions, asking questions, posting trade ideas. We love the engagement. We love how everybody is so helpful. Keep up the good work, Kathy. You got caught being hot. Let's jump into the alerts, starting with Monday, the 18th. First trade we did was an opening trade in CL. So we put on a short strangle in oil. And this at this point, there was 58 days until expiration and so we've uh just since we put it on we're up about 280 bucks uh since monday so still dead centered uh waiting for a little bit more profit before we take that off next trade in google we did a an iron duck in google ducks continue to be an awesome trade uh this one we did with 11 days to expiration so if we take a look at google google uh, you can see prices come down since we put this on. Uh, price is actually dead centered in the duck head. So uh, what we're going to look to do next week is possibly put on another Google duck. And we'll probably, um, so it'll be a new fresh one. So the break even will be way down here. And we'll probably, we'll, ch we'll check out the same expiration. But more than likely, we'll put it on in the uh, next expiration, either what currently has 14 days or maybe even 21. So we'll see how it sets up next week, uh, but look for that just to kind of layer into Google. The way, the way I like to look at this is, so this is the current break even. And if we set that break even to our chart, just to give us a little bit different visual, you can see, whoops, let's, uh, let's remove these. I'm not sure what these are from. Move, remove. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Uh, remove drawing, remove drawing. And so this is our this is our break even. So if price continues lower, it, you know, there's a, there's a potential we'll take a loss on this and we still have a week left. We have all of next week to be in this trade. But if we put another one on, we're moving our new one with a new break even down here. And so what that'll do is just uh, layer into this. So, you know, our new break even will be somewhere down here and implied, you know, if, if price does move down, implied, vol implied volatility will most likely start creeping up and we might get a bigger credit. So that's what we like to do. You know, not every one of these is going to work out, but uh, uh, if, if price does continue lower, that's what we'll look to do. And if not, if it stays right here, we'll collect another duck head or if it shoots back higher, Obviously, we have the option to take the beak as well. So we'll see what happens in Google, but that's the plan. Next trade, opening trade in TGT, Target. We did an earnings iron duck in Target. And so uh, with this one, price shot up. Target's been on fire. Let's go to a chart real quick of TGT. And let's go back to a year chart. So the last earnings cycle had a huge move higher and then it just kind of grinded higher all quarter. Then again, this quarter, boom, shot up. And so we put this on right before earnings. And so what does that mean for us duck hunters? Well, price is way up here and way up here. <laughs> and so, you know, at that point, I was trying to actually take this off early just to free up the capital because there was a very low chance of it ever getting back to the max profit area. But what I don't want to do is I don't really want to pay up to take that off because if it expires here, uh, I'm just going to keep that beak profit, which isn't much. I did this super tiny, only two contracts, uh, so it's a $26 profit. But that's what we did. We just let this expire, and took it off. I tried to get filled earlier in the week. And when you're trying to get filled on these, when you want to make sure you get the beak profit, just remember that uh, it, it's always on the, on the regular ducks, it's, it's always the width of your call spread is the price you want to take it off. So the width of the call spread is $1. So we didn't want to really buy this back for any more than a dollar uh, to collect that beak profit. And I was trying to get filled at 98 cents, 99 cents, even a dollar. wasn't getting filled, so I wasn't going to chase it. I just simply let this expire and we keep that, keep that beak profit. So that's the goal there. Anytime we get way up here in the beak, it doesn't make sense to keep it on just because... 
uh, you're you're tying up that capital. In this case, it was only 574 bucks. Uh, but I know some people in the community did take it off and you could do that a couple different ways. If you're not getting filled, you could just close out the short options or you could just uh, close out the put spread too. So those are a couple different options. As far as the alerts go and managing these trades, we're going to put it on as a duck and take it off as a duck, but there's nothing wrong with uh, freeing up the capital by, by buying back your short strikes or buying back one side. So keep that in mind. Next trade, opening trade in Tesla. So in Tesla, we did a reverse iron duck. And if you go back to part three of the course, we talk about, you know, typically in equities, typically in stocks and indices, you're, you're, you're going to be putting on a regular iron duck because the puts trade richer than the calls. But there are situations like we're seeing here. And, and there's a couple others like Roku, uh, Shopify, both have high, uh, high premium in the calls right now. So Trading a reverse iron duck is on the board as well. So let's take a look at Tesla. I actually, uh, actually tried to get uh, close this one out today as well because price ran the other way uh, to the downside in this case. Um, and so, you know, very little chance of getting back. If we put our price slice right to the, uh, you know, the edge of the beak, you know, we've got about a 10%, 11% probability of it getting back. So I was actually trying to close this out for beak profit. Same situation. I couldn't get... I couldn't get filled for in this case. Uh, now, on, now this is a this is the reverse, right? So this is a reverse iron duck. So it's the width of the put spread, and so it's two and a half points wide. So we don't want to close this for less than two dollars and fifty cents. And so I was trying to get filled for less than two fifty. Didn't didn't happen. So we'll try again uh, early next week. And here's the thing. I mean, this is this is all the way out to December sixth. Is the December seventh is the expiration date? And so tying up you know, almost $2,200 in capital for that long just doesn't make sense. We're just going to take this, take this big profit and run. Next trade, closing trade in XRT. So we had a short strangle. We had adjusted it into a straddle and then we took it off, ended up booking a, a small profit, but got out of that. If implied volatility pops higher, we'll potentially look to re-enter a new trade, but we are out of XRT. Next trade, closing trade in Tesla. So we had a uh, regular iron duck in Tesla as well. And we went ahead and closed this out a bit over beak profit. Same situation. There's less than a 10% chance of price moving back into the max profit area. So we just took that beak profit and closed that one out. Next trade, opening trade in Roku. So another reverse iron duck in Roku. So let's check that out. Uh, here's what that looks like. So price is hanging out right here. Um, if we move this to the edge of the beak, you know, we still got a 31% chance probability that it could get back into the duck head. So we're holding on to this expiration 12.7. So we'll see what happens in Roku. Roku's been on a, a little bit of a mini run to the upside. So if, obviously if, uh, if it continues higher, it, we've got potential to get into the duck head. If it turns around and, and, and falls over, then it'll, you know, potentially just hang out in the beak area, but we'll see what happen. We'll see what happens. Next trade, closing trade in RUT. We had a weekly double calendar in rut. Ended up closing out, closing this out for $10.55. Kind of disappointing fill because I actually put in an order right near the open for $11.50. And I know a couple of our members got out at like $11.40. Uh, I, I just, I really haven't seen a, a price collapse like this on the last trading day. Usually it kind of stays bitter or goes up, but in this case, uh, implied volatility was contracting and so, uh, price moved lower. So we ended up just bailing it at 1055 could have been a little bit more patient and it would have went up some, but anyway, out of it booked a nice profit. It was dead centered in the, in the weekly double calendar. And so, uh, booked a few hundred bucks on that trade. Next trade, closing trade in SPX, uh, another iron duck that was way up in the beak, less than 10% chance of getting back to max profit. So we just, we booked a little bit more. In this case, the call spread was five points wide. We had the 3055 and the 3060. So we wanted to buy it back for less than five bucks. In this case, we bought it back for 495. So we booked a little bit more than, uh, booked a little bit more than the, uh, than the beak profit on that one. Next trade, closing trade in Amazon. So we had this one on uh, for, I think we put it on when there's like 11 or 14 days to expiration. I can't remember exactly, but 
Nice move in Amazon, came right smack dab into the duck head, and we smoked that one in the head. So nice, nice profit there of uh, 575 bucks. And then lastly, uh, closing trade in Target. So we put this on and um, uh, we just, this was way up in the, this is the one I already showed you. Um, wait, what was that other Target trade I just mentioned before? Oh, that was a different one. Uh, that, oh, that was the opening, right? So then, yeah, we, this is this is where we just let it expire and book that book that profit. So out of target, and so those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions we have on. We've got a short strangle in six B. Premium has really stayed bid in here, not getting much of a contraction. We've had this on for about a week or so, but um, we're up a little bit, still dead centered, but uh, not doing anything there yet. CL I mentioned ES. Kind of a late day rally. We've got this long put vertical here. Price is still within range here. Just looking for some more downside to benefit that. Gold, we've got this iron condor. Price is hanging out right here. So we've got a little bit of profit. Just waiting for some more to get out of that one. Natty gas, uh, up about 2.8%. Big, big swings in that gas. But, um, you know, with the premium in these things, it doesn't even, you know, 2.5% move, barely moves out of center here. So, Still in a good spot in our two uh, Nat Gas inverted strangles. ZB bonds, we've got two pieces on here. One is this adjusted short strangle. You see price is hanging out right here. So we need a little bit of upside to benefit that one. And then we added another one uh, a week or so ago. And that's right here. So price is right here. So we could use some more theta decay and a little bit of downside to benefit that one. So hopefully price kind of bounces around and we book profits in both. We're actually we're actually still down in our overall ZB strangle trade uh, after adjustments. So we're still working our way back to profits in that one. Wheat, uh, pretty centered here. Uh, just waiting for some more profit before we take that off. Apple, we've got this long put vertical. Price is just outside of range. So looking for some downside to get back into range there. DE, John Deere, you can see price is hanging out right here inside range. Close that. That's just a theoretical piece I was looking at. Uh, so just looking for some downside to benefit DE. Uh, these are kind of just that short delta, short bias plays uh, to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio, which we're sitting at about right at a little, little over two and a half, uh, excuse me, a little over two to one on our short delta versus theta ratio. DIA, same thing. We've got two different sets of short call verticals. So this is both of them together. You can see price is just outside of range. So again, looking for a little bit of downside to benefit this. If this market can ever go down, we did get a few days uh, this week, which was nice. I'd like to see this thing just roll right over, but we'll see what happens. Whoops. EWZ, we've got a uh, short strangle here. Now we're at about 25% of max profit in a fairly short period of time, our strikes are fairly tight, only three strikes wide because EWZ is a, a low price symbol. So we do these a little bit tighter as, as far as our range goes. Uh, so if we if price stays pretty close to center here early next week and we can book 30% of max profit, we will go ahead and take that off on, on Monday potentially. Google, I mentioned that one. Uh, IWM, we've got this uh, sh uh, long put vertical here, just waiting for some more downside to benefit that. Same thing in QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals here. Price is hanging out right inside range here, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. So you can see what will happen if we get a little bit of downside in stocks. It'll really benefit our portfolio. Uh, Roku, I mentioned SMH. So we've got this adjusted short strangle. You can see price is hanging out outside of our range here. But if we look at just the untested side, just the puts, you can see we've still got a decent little chunk of premium left in there. So we're not looking to roll those up yet, not looking to make any adjustments. We're not adding to this one because implied volatility is just too low. I thought implied volatility started uh, spiking this week as, as price was coming down. I was hoping we'd get up to uh, a little bit higher. I was going to add to this, but didn't happen. It contracted today. So... Just gonna continue to manage that one. Uh, SPX, we've got just the one duck in SPX. We took off the other one. So if we take a look at that, you can see price is hanging out right here in the duck beak. We could use a little bit of downside to get into that duck head. Uh, and, and we'll look to potentially add to this one next week. This one has, I think, 14 days to expiration. No, seven. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, 14. 
Uh, this one's got 14 days to expiration. So with implied volatility being as low as it is, we'll probably have to go out further. So we might look to throw on another 21 day duck, uh, but we'll look at doing that uh, first thing next week. SPY, we've got an iron condor. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range here, right at the break even. Uh, I've still got a tiny bit of premium left in those puts, so we haven't taken them off yet. Um, but uh, that's, if, it, if price continues higher, we'll close out that the put vertical side and see if we can get a little bit of a rebound. Um, not looking to add to this one because implied volatility is just not very high in there either. I mentioned Target, uh, Tesla. Did I mention Tesla? Big move down today. Tesla is down over 6%. I'm not sure exactly what that was due to. I know they came out and they announced their new uh, pickup truck, which looked pretty, <laughs> looked like a rocket ship, but um, Tesla's anyway, hanging out right here. We'll, we'll close this one out early next week if price kind of continues lower, stays right here. Only a 10%, 11% chance of getting back. So probably just book that. And then XLK, another short Delta position. It's moved outside of range. So just looking for some downside to benefit that one. So everybody have a great weekend. We'll look at putting on some new positions next week with, with, the ones, with all the ones we closed out today. Specifically, we've got some a decent amount of capital in cash looking to redeploy. So we'll be looking at uh, potential trades, some more ducks, uh, anything else that has some high implied volatility. We'll look to sell some premium and another potential weekly uh, probably a weekly double calendar. Um, you know, I, I like doing the ducks better than the weekly iron condor just because you got that no risk to one side, uh, for doing shorter duration trades like that. But, um, we will, we will look to potentially put on another, uh, weekly double calendar. So look for that. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.